Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a visualizer based on audio waveform inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So this is going to be a moderately complex tutorial and it's going to require a third party plugin. We'll get into that in a minute. To get things started, let's do effects library, go to effects and create a new fusion composition. So I will drag this somewhere onto the timeline and then we'll go into it on the fusion page in order to edit it. So the audio waveform node, which we're going to use in order to get information from a audio clip is not available out of the box. So we need to use a tool called reactor in order to get that plugin, install it and use it with the end result. So I'm going to put a link to the reactor plugin, which is free, which helps you to get extra tools that you can use within DaVinci Resolve, such as the audio waveform. So look for that link in the description. So once you have Reactor installed, and if you need help on how to do that and to get it working, there's another video on my channel on how to install plugins with Reactor. But once you have it installed, we can go up to Workspace and then Scripts, and then we can find Reactor and open Reactor in order to install the Audio Waveform plugin. So from the Reactor interface, we want to find Audio Waveform. It's close to the top. So you find it, and then you can just go ahead and click this little checkbox. And once you close out of Fusion Reactor, It'll recommend that you restart Resolve before we actually get started with things. So once you've done all of that, you can right click, go to Add Tool, and you'll find Audio Waveform under Fuses. So Audio Waveform is right here. And with this, you'll need to enter a WAV file. So basically take any song and convert it into a dot .wav. You can use programs like Audacity to do that. The limitation that I've ran into is that the file size needs to be under 50 megabytes. So if you run into file size issues, what you can do is split up your Fusion composition into two separate clips and have your part one of your song end where the second part starts up and then just put them side by side in the timeline. Aside from that though, you can just browse to find the WAV file on your computer. So I'm going to find Beauty Flow by Kevin MacLeod, convert it, oh wait, actually the one minute test version I have because of file size issues. So I converted it inside of Audacity, not hard to do it, you just bring an MP3 in and you export as a WAV for however much audio information you need. And once you have that in here, it's going to be able to create an audio waveform based on that information. So I'm gonna preview this at the top left. And if we hit play, we'll be able to see the audio information showing up here on the left based on how loud the information coming in is. But this doesn't look exactly how we had at the start of the video. So with this tool, we can represent the audio waveforms in different ways. But if you want to do an audio spectrum, we can go over to the spectrum tab of audio waveform node and then check spectrum and we'll get a very different look on this. Instead, the waves will be coming out of the bottom. So currently it is a rough line, but if we change the appearance to, I believe we want needles, then we'll get these little lines that go straight up based on how loud each of the audio channels are. So if we hit play, it'll look like this. To get a lot more of these little needles coming up, what I did is I changed the FFT to 2048. So now it looks a lot more like this. Now, you also notice that these needles are peaking all the way to the top of the screen. So what we can do to make that smaller is to actually lower the scale down. So I'm going to make it, let's see, something like 0.3 and hit play. Still kind of too high. So I'll lower the scale here to 0.1 and we'll hit play one more time. See if that looks good for how we actually want it to be. Another thing you might notice once Fusion starts rendering out some of the frames is that as it is right now, your lines are going to go kind of crazy. So if you don't want it to render the needles completely at every single frame in its entirety, then what you can turn on is a setting called Steady Wave. So when you do this, it's going to be averaging the frames together a little bit in order to get how it displays. So I think I had the frame count at 5. If we go back and we hit play now, then the movement is going to be a lot smoother. It'll look less crazy, and I think that's what we want. On the layout tab over here, I believe I also increased the thickness of each line. So let's go ahead and try doing that so that these lines are kind of grouped together a little bit more. So if we go back and we hit play, we can see if that looks a little bit more like what we want. And we can also change the color of the line. So let's go ahead and lower the red and green a bit so we can get something in between a blue or a turquoise color or really you can set it to whatever you actually want it to be. Okay, now with this audio waveform, we're gonna use it as the base visuals at the bottom of our screen. But I also want to use a setting called the elongation in order to determine the values of some things we're gonna set later on. So for instance, we'll take the logo and we'll have its size bounce a bit 
depending on how strong the volume is. So using that elongation setting, we can add that to the size and make it louder and make it larger when the audio is loud and then keep it small when the audio is soft. But if we check elongation on here, which is necessary to get that value, Okay, so for this elongation setting, we don't actually want the bar here to show through on the media output. And since we're going to just take this audio waveform and use it visually, what we can do instead is to copy it over to another position. So I'm going to control C, copy that node and paste it down here. And I'll rename this with F2 and call it elongation waveform. And then I'm going to take the top waveform and I'm going to turn elongation off. So instead, when we want to use the elongation value, we'll be using it from this elongation waveform. And we can add that in any mathematical expression we want. So next I want to take a logo or any image uh, that you want the size to bounce with the beat. And you can right click and add it with add tool, in, out, and loader. So loader, you find a file on your computer you want to use. So I'll go here to logos and I'll pick DaVinci Resolve. So we're going to need to modify the size of the logo when it displays on screen. So I'm going to right click, go to add tool, transform, and we'll add a transform node, which will include the scale value. So let's go ahead and connect this here. And then we can show this on the right preview window. Okay, well, that, that's not going to help right there so much. So we might actually want to preview the media out, but let's add a merge node. So right click add tool composite merge. Since we're going to be merging the audio waveform with this logo, and feeding that to media out. So this will be the background. We'll load in the audio waveform here and then we'll connect this to media out and use the right preview. I'll keep the waveform one on the left preview. Um, the it's a minor issue here, the output frame is being set to the size of the image. So what we can do to fix that is actually to swap the waveform to be the background in this merge. So we need to connect the waveform to be the yellow connector here. So I'm going to disconnect these connect the audio waveform here and then the image will be the foreground instead. So doing that we get our images properly combined here. Okay so cool that's kind of what we want. So now what we need to do is set up an expression to control the size on the transform for this logo. So I'm going to right click here on size and we are going to modify this with an expression. So when we do that, we can go over to the modifiers tab and we'll have the ability to set numbers down here. So I'm going to take the number in one and I'm going to set that to one. So the default size is going to be one and then we'll add whatever the elongation value is into number two and combine those two numbers. So in number two, we right click that and we connect it with elongation waveform elongation. So now depending on what frame we're at, this number two is going to have a different value. So let's go over to the second tab here, the number expression, and then we need to add the numbers together. So we have the number in number one here. So we put in one to represent that in the expression and then in two for number two. So really simple here, in one plus in two, and that's going to get us the size value. So if we go back over to the tools tab, you can see that this size value is being modified depending on what frame one. So if we hit play now, we can see that that elongation value is modifying the size of our logo. Now this is in super slow-mo because it's rendering, but if we go back to the start and we hit play, we can see that it is bouncing quite nicely. Now if that's too much or too little for you, what you could do is go over to the modifiers tab, go to over here, and you could multiply this in two by a third value. So you could do, let's say, in two in parentheses times number three, and then we just need to put in a value for number three. So if you go over here to this tab, now we can have number three be the elongation multiplier. So if you want it to be twice the elongation effect, then you do two there. And now it's gonna bounce twice as much uh, based on that elongation value. So if you want the logo to bounce a lot, then you can do that. Though this might be a little crazy. Actually, it looks kind of nice. So we might just go with that, I think. So that's half of everything done already. Now, if we wanna add particles to it, we can just control the force of the particles with that elongation value, just like we controlled the size here. So let's set up a particle system. So let's start with a particle emitter and let's add in a particle renderer somewhere after that. And then this particle renderer will become the background of a second merge. So I'm gonna right click, add tool, do composite merge. And so the particle renderer is gonna be the background 
and let's break this merge one. The merge one here will be the new foreground and we connect that to media out. So now we have particles added in which have no force currently. Okay, so for right now, we don't want to see the finished result. Let's just put render one on the right so we can actually see those particles. So right now they're just spawning in the middle there and they last for about 100 frames each. We're going to want the lifespan to go way down. That'll help with performance, but also help to emphasize the music because if you see the particles for 100, 100 frames, not milliseconds, then it will be kind of hard to tell when they came from. So I think a lower lifespan is better here. Uh, next, for them to actually come out from the center, they need to have some kind of force. So let's right click on the line here, add tool, go down to particles, and then let's do a tangent force. So this will make them kind of come out from the center based on a certain force value. Now forces by default keep applying to the particles for their entire lifespan. But we can go over to this second tab here for tangent force and we can actually make it so that the tangent force only occurs basically at the first frame by setting it to 0.1. So the age of the particle determines whether or not it gets that force. So since we set the end uh, age to 0.1, that means it's only going to be applying the tangent force for 10% of its lifespan, which 10 frames comes out to one frame. So it's only gonna be applying on the first frame basically. Now, because it's not gonna be adding the force consistently, the force is gonna need to be a lot stronger for it to look right. So let's go ahead and set up an expression for this Z strength on the tangent force. So I'm gonna right click and we'll modify with an expression. We'll go over to modifiers and we can just start by making number two the elongation waveform and then number one will be let's say multiplier based on that elongation value so let's try something high i had it like at 150 or 100 before so let's start with like 100 and now we'll go over to number expression and we'll do number two or number one times number two and that is going to give us our value so if we go to the start and we hit play, we can see these particles are actually coming out far enough now. But if we look at it for the full picture of 1920 pixels, these point particles aren't really big enough to see very well. So what we could do is change the type of particle which is being emitted. So on particle emitter one, we can go over to the style tab and we can change it to a brush. And the one I was using before was uh, down here, a gold leaf. So we can just pick one of those and that's gonna change the particles into something much bigger. So if we go to frame one and hit play, uh, we can see them there. We might not like that particular leaf, so feel free to change it into whatever you actually like here. A little hard to tell it's a leaf, so we might wanna go into size controls and increase the size too. So we could make this 0.25, making it 250% bigger. And let's go back to the start and hit play. Okay, it's a lot easier to tell that it's an actual leaf brush there. So that might be looking good for us. So in a lot of cases, the particles are kind of stuck behind the logo here, which is always going to be a minimum of a certain size. So I'm thinking we can actually add a mask here to get better render performance. So let's right click, add tool, go to mask and then ellipse. And I'm going to connect this to the blue part of the particle render. That's the effect mask. So now if we invert the mask and make it something like 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, then we're going to hide basically any of the particles that are behind this logo, uh, but everything else will be displayed. And I think that might make it a little bit more performant. So let's see, with the effect mask on and then without it on, does that make any difference? Oh yeah, okay, it definitely does. So let's add that ellipse back there as the effect mask. So if we go to the start here and hit play after we get some of those uh, frames rendered, then you can see based on the elongation value, these leaves are going to be coming a lot further out or staying relatively close to the logo. So in a sense, like the power of the beat is going to be controlling these leaves, which is pretty cool, actually. Now, I think it is a little bit crazy how much it goes right now. So I might go into the tangent force, find the modifier and lower the value here. So as long as you set up the expression correctly, all you need to do is change the numbers and you can basically get it to look however you want later on, which is super cool. So let's render it with a value of 80 and see how that goes there. So it's rendering out there. The logo and the particle system is being controlled by the elongation value on the audio waveform. And then we have the audio waveform itself at the bottom. So all we would need to do now is to basically go back over to the edit tab 
determine how long we want this clip to be. Make sure that it's not longer than the music clip itself, otherwise you run out of music and, it, well, it'll stop. But we can take our background and we can drop it in here if we want, and then the fusion composition can render on top of it. But you know what? I actually want to go one step further than that. I want the zoom value of the uh, underlying image to actually be controlled a little bit by the elongation too. So the background image itself will bounce a bit. So let's actually take this image and we'll go back into the fusion composition. So fusion composition. Okay, so what we'll want to do to add in the background to this fusion composition is to create a new merge. So I'm going to right click and we'll go to add tool composite merge. And all of this stuff will be the foreground for this merge. So I will add it in there. And so for the background, I'll right click and add in a tool. We'll do a loader node and I'll find a background we can use on the desktop. So I'll go ahead and grab this image here. Afterwards, to control the size of it with animation, we'll right click, add tool, transform. So connect these together, the image to the transform, and then the transform to the yellow of the merge three. So depending on the size of your background image, it may look out of shape here and the media out. So what we're gonna wanna do is after the transform, we wanna resize it back to the standard frame size. So I'm gonna right click, add tool, transform, resize, which will default to your project settings. So now if we go back over to the edit tab, we should be able to see the background here and everything in the frame correctly and there shouldn't be any black space. So now what we can do to finally just animate that background is to once again add an expression. So I'm going to right click on the size, modify with an expression, and then we'll go to modifiers. I'll have one as the default value and then I will add that to the elongation value. So connect to elongation waveform elongation. Go over to the second tab for number expression and then do number one plus number two and that's going to get the size there so if we go back to the start and we hit play uh, it's going to have that size bouncing in and out now i don't know if that's going to be too extreme we can always change the values so let's wait for it to pre-render okay so that that looks like it's going to be way too much so we'll go to the modifiers and we can reduce that elongation value by a amount so so I'll multiply it by 0.2 to reduce the effect by basically 80%. Add some parentheses here and we'll do number two times number three. So that number three is gonna be multiplying it by 20%, meaning reducing the value, which is gonna reduce its impact by 80%. So it should look much more tame now. Let's go to the start, hit play. And so we're gonna have a little bit of bouncing there now, but not too much, not too crazy. So in a nutshell, that is how you can create a audio waveform visualizer inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. I'm going to be trying to create a setting template, um, which you can just load into your own project if you don't want to go through all the steps yourself. Remember though, you have to have Reactor installed and you have to have the audio waveform plugin. But aside from that, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future video content.